Thank God for everyone joining. Come on in the house. We're getting ready to get started. Um, if you can keep an eye, like I said, I know you're going to watch party, uh, hun, and uh, you know any kind of comments. If uh, Pastor Chen, if you want to watch party or share, uh, it, it'll be posting right to our uh, Facebook. Uh, church one's facebook live here in just a moment or two so as you see it come in uh you can definitely feel free uh to okay. to share and uh and all that wonderfulness um there we go all right we've got pastor larry brown's in the house already god bless you pastor good to see you sir pastor the church one richmond that's soon to come amen, amen. praise amen. the lord everybody we're getting started Want to thank God for you joining, giving everyone time to kind of join in, chime in. Uh, as always, it's Word Wednesday time. Uh, Church One Charlotte, uh, along with Church One Al Alpharetta tonight, uh, we're continuing our series of What Is God Saying Now? Uh, we're, as we're getting ready to get started, we're just giving everyone time to kind of join in, giving everyone time to even share and um, watch party this out. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to do introductions in just a moment or two, and um, and all that good stuff. So we're just giving everyone time to join in. Um, and I'm going to try to, as always, uh, if we if we don't see it, we try to keep one screen up to make sure we're seeing everybody. Uh, but if for any reason we don't see you, um, uh, just just know that. Uh, we're thanking God for you being here with us. I'm going to jump over here and see. Um, well, actually, uh, yeah, First Lady, yeah, yeah, Sister Shawna, you're going to you're going to do that so we can make sure we we keep um, we don't get too many different feeds going on. Um, but yeah, thank God for you all joining. We're just giving everyone a few more moments to join in, Amen. giving everyone a few more moments uh, to to watch party out as we get started. Amen. We thank God for you being here. As always, your brother, Pastor Charles Carter from the Church One Charlotte Missionary, LaShonda Carter, yes. uh, Kaya, Layla, and Kayla in our Church One Charlotte stay-at-home studios. Uh, we're getting started and continuing our What Is God Saying Now series. I want to thank God for our guest on this evening. And, uh, you know, I have to, um, you know, since I'm the pastor, you know, oh. <laughs> since I'm the pastor, I might have to, you know, I have rebuke folk up in the church. How, you know, they're wearing pants in the Lord's house again. Oh. God have mercy. <laughs> These folk is wearing pants. <laughs> Chin got on pants. I know First Lady got on pants. I'm asking <laughs> God to do something right now. I got my pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Oh, my goodness. We, we in consecration and y'all got pants on. Lord have mercy. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a, that's a sanctified church joke. Everybody might not get that. But anyway, that's, that's always funny to me for some reason. I'm always messing with uh with prophetess Madge Bass on that you know she she might see this later or whatever that's always a, a good running joke it's either hats or pants I'm carrying on about what where's that you know so no I'm kidding but no we want to thank God for us joining us on this evening uh we know her time is precious and we just thank God thanking God for uh her being with us none other than Pastor Tiffany Ann Chin of the Church One Alpharetta we're getting started uh we're you know we're just um like I said are we, are we good now or what, what's good. happening here we're good okay <laughs> Okay, because I, you know, that that don't look like that don't look like Church One's page there. You on there? I'm messing with her. No, but I'm 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 just playing. But no, we we're just wanting to make sure whoever we got online, hey, Amen. We want to we wanna give them some hellos and some shout outs. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get Sister Shauna to give a shout out. Praise God, Pastor Larry Brown. I'm sorry, you haven't you say you haven't told me. Oh, um, are you on are you on uh, Facebook? Oh, um, do uh, because you're probably as Church One. Maybe that might be what's happening. Jump back into yourself there, because you're probably connecting as uh, as as Church One Charlotte and not as yourself there. But yeah, we're 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 just giving everyone time to join in here and trying to make sure we got all of our all our connectivity together. I'm trying to connect. <laughs> yeah, and 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 understanding no, understanding no sometimes. Facebook loves to change some stuff uh, uh, at the last minute. Yes. And they've done something that might not be allowing watch parties like it needs to. But uh, but nevertheless. We're like still going to do what we do, right? Yep. We, we're going to do what we do. And we just thank God uh, for everyone joining, everyone that'll see this live, everyone that'll see this, uh, even in its recorded state. Uh, like I said earlier, we have Pastor Tiffany Ann Chen from Church One Alpharetta joining us tonight as we're continuing 
our series on what is God saying now. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Chin uh, making time and thank God for Pastor Chin being ready. The Bible says that we ought to always have a testimony of the hope that lies within. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't like hanging around these preachers that it take them six months to get a message together. And, you know, you gotta, you gotta write a dissertation for them, <laughs> to get them to oh, come boy. and join in. Oh, I ain't, I, if I ain't messing with nobody, maybe I am messing with somebody. <laughs> if, if the shoe fits, just say ouch, amen. But no, uh, you know, really the, 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 the beauty of this series and, and what we've been doing over this time is this is not scripted. This is those that spend time in prayer. When you talk to somebody every day, you, you can tell people what they're doing. You know, mm -hmm. when you don't see somebody for a while, when you're not in good conversation, you, you have to kind of make up stuff. You know, yeah. you have to kind of, uh, you know, or even just be honest and be like, no, nah, I, I can't tell you what they up to, you know, because I haven't talked yeah. to them in years. As believers, uh, it's imperative that we're keeping uh, our prayer time uh, yes. a dialogue, not a monologue. Come on, right. somebody. Come on, that's so, good. So as we hear from God, as we're speaking to God, yeah, not just our little Christmas list, not just our Santa Jesus list, uh, but uh, taking time to hear from God. Yes. Um, and, you know, many, many of us, and I know, I don't know about you, but it's been this thing at three o'clock in the morning lately, you know, 4.30 in the morning yes. lately, you know, yes. where it's like- 3.33. See, yep, so, that's what I had. so this is very interesting. 555. <laughs> you know, I was, I was, I was blaming, you know, we got this, you know, we got, you know, this, this other uh, mattress and I'm like, well, maybe it's just this mattress keep waking me up. No, well, no man, you better wake up and, and talk to God for a little while. Right. So, but point I'm getting at is that uh, it was very interesting because, you know, I kept, I, be I began hearing others saying the same thing, you know, and, you know, as, as church one, uh, we're doing our beginning of the year consecration. Uh, but even this was something that was very interesting. Uh, Apostle Ryan McJimsey uh, from Spartanburg, South Carolina, the City Gate Church, when he was with us several weeks ago, uh, he was sharing this. He was like, yeah, consecration time is not just for the beginning of the year. Uh, so you can kind of line it up with everybody else's uh, yeah. New Year's resolutions. No, this is for uh, all times of year. As a matter of fact, if you, he even said this. He was like, look, if you wait until the beginning of the year, you already behind. That's Amen. Right. So we're just thanking God for this consecration time, but knowing that uh, throughout the year, God is calling us to a higher level of consecration. And it's not just turning, some of us are, are, you know, if you like Pastor Chen, you know, she played division one sports, you know, you know, watching what you eat and all that ain't no problem. You know, those that's working out, you know, they doing all that fancy stuff. Yeah, watching what you eat ain't no problem. Some of us need to take a social media fast, amen? Hey. Some of us need to take, and this ain't, this ain't making an excuse because the bottom, bottom line is, is uh, you know, what we did and we learned this a while ago with, with 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 uh church one and even ministry we worked with um in previous years was we started doing what we were calling a no meats no sweets because it got to be with with new believers it got to be to the point we were spending so much time trying to explain folk what they could and couldn't eat that mm. we missing the whole point of the fast right and just we, simplify we, it right so we, we're simplifying it for 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 super christians you know where where you want to you know do air and 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 the tears of Jesus yes just do that because because it's 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 awesome no question turn your plate down whole time yes do that but one of the, my point I'm getting at was that um the thing was is like you know what um I believe God is saying something for you brother you sister uh, this fast is 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 not for food for you this is a Facebook fast. This is an Instagram or TikTok fast. You know, this is a cell phone period fast. How about that? Well, you know, to send yeah. or receive calls for business or loved ones is all you need to be using it for. You know what? If, if you need to go old school, we can get you a flip phone. Amen. They don't have they don't have none of that stuff. You know, if you want to keep it real and keep serious about this thing, because it's, it's just a matter of changing your sim out. I know, I know how to do it. So long story short, um, this time that we're taking, uh, it, it's important. And uh, the people that God is, is bringing to us on a weekly basis are those that are truly hearing from God. Yes. So I want to give uh, Pastor Chen an opportunity to say hello and just share some things with us real quick as we're getting started. Pastor Chen, come, come on and say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. It is Pastor Tiffany, Pastor Chen. Um, I, first and foremost, I want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to just uh, fellowship with you um, and, and to have, have some time to commune uh, in this space 
about what God is saying. That's that's powerful. That's powerful. Um, but uh, you said so much. My mind was like over here, over there. Like you know, no, no, no. I'm not saying that you're talking too much. But I was, I was like, yeah, that's it. You know. But really, uh, as we were talking earlier, if my people who are called by my name were humble, humble is fasting. That means fasting. And people think it, it, it's fasting. That's what that word means. And it, it, you know, fasting isn't just for you know the beginning of the year. You know, it, it, we should be able to live and lead a fasted life. Wow. Right. Okay, so this is not something that I just do in January. This should be something that you do. And if God is giving you that instruction, right? Because it's personal. We have corporate fasts, but there's personal things. And if God is calling you to do that, and you 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 hit a point, um, it's not always about food. It's really about whatever is taking your attention away from the tabernacle in the commune that you have with the Lord. So if you are, I don't know, exercising too much and that's taking up all your time, right? And you're not spending time with the Lord, then it becomes an idol in your life. Wow. And so wow. we need to, we need to, it's not just about food. It's like you were saying earlier, I know, and God knows that I know, and he knows that I can cut food off. This is not really the thing that's really taking the attention. And so that's really, it's a personal thing. It's a, like you said, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. I have that, I can receive word of knowledge, I can receive word of wisdom by that time that I'm spending with him prostrate in the closet, whatever it is, um, to be able to really hear from the Lord. And then when we are fasting, when we are humbling ourselves, woo, I mean, you start hearing stuff. And listen, listen, let me say this, sometimes, in our fasting, right? We might hear from the Lord about stuff that's in us. Yes. You know, we let's you know, and, and people start making fasts become an idol. Wow. And it's not it's not really about you to run and tell it. You know, if we have a corporate fast, yes, we 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 announce that. But I don't run it. If I go on a fast and the Lord is 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 consecrating that and telling me to do that and mandating me to to look you need to this is what i need you to do i'm not like hey everybody i'm on a fast you know <laughs> hey no i can't do that because i'm on a fast no oh no I'm, I'm on a fast no you need to protect that thing just like you would protect a gift just like you would protect something that the lord if you're for those those prophets out there or those who are in the office of the prophet which are two different things but for those people that they're not going to run and tell it if they're obedient to that gift if the lord didn't tell you to run and tell it he might be telling you to pray to wow. sit to tarry you know so i mean you said a lot <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go off on a tangent. Right, right, and, and literally but that's how that's how we're thing. running. Um, yeah. Um, but but here, here's something that's interesting right here. One thing, God, uh, mm -hmm. missionary Marion Williams and uh, Minister Lexi Evans. God bless you all. Uh, I want to check because because Pastor Chin done already called us on consecration. If y'all got pants on too, y'all in trouble. I'm I'm. Yeah, Pastor Chin said y'all supposed to be prostrate before <laughs> the Lord. Oh my goodness, I felt all right right there. Oh my goodness. So all y'all got pants on, y'all in trouble. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. That's been the joke. I know y'all know. I want to thank God first and foremost. Amen. For, for missionary LaShawn to call to my wife. Amen. You see, she got her uh everything pink and green and any nothing in between today for a special reason. Amen. Praise God for her, amen. But you know, uh, you know, sister Shauna, she's gonna be with us more uh because you know she just need to be with us more. And I, I want to give Sister Shauna a moment to, to share some things also, but I wanted to pull that passage of scripture up while you were talking, uh, uh Matthew 6 and 18. Uh, so it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret 
will reward you. The hey. King James Version says, I believe, will reward you openly. So you can preach that right there. He'll reward you openly. Yes, indeed. We need Brother Duncan or Pastor Duncan on here so he can start playing that little organ. I guess. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Pastor Duncan going to preach that. Pastor Duncan and Lady Duncan going to preach that thing right there. I'm going I'm to have to send that to him. If he joined in tonight, I'm going to have to bring that back up. But no, but nevertheless, um, that was that passage of scripture. Even that, so we can make sure that our seasoned deacons and sanctified mothers, you know, so they don't call me after service saying we really didn't have Bible study tonight. I got to make sure that we got our scripture in tonight. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles 7, 14 was the first passage that was shared and has been the umbrella scripture for this time that Pastor Chin shared earlier. If you don't know what it says, go read it. Second Chronicles 7, 14. That's about if my people will, uh, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. This is time for the believer. This isn't hey. about the unbeliever. This is about the believer. So what is that saying? Old Testament scripture realized that there was a lack of humbleness. My goodness, mm -hmm. that there was a lot of stuff being done for show. There was a lot of things being done that was causing power to be limited. And, and of that passage that was that even uh, Pastor Chin was sharing, because this is funny, you know, um, uh, you know, I get very interesting ways to kind of um, share a little ministry input at work with a lot of the guys that that are on my team and, 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 and things like that. And and as we share certain things, you know, uh, some, you know, that you can you, you kind of pick up on some of the, the folk that might have a connection, if you know what I mean. And, they, yes. you know, but no, because one thing we do, we eat, we show enough eat uh, what well, my team. I'm always ordering something, bringing something in or whatever. And uh, they're like, well, Carter, you you know, you you know, you hadn't, you know, well, we gonna do donuts today or what is the deal? Y'all say, well, no, y'all, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing no meats, no sweets right now. And they're, oh, well, you know, yeah, we're doing the Daniel fast and so forth and so on. And we get to talking about it. But the bottom line I'm getting at is, is uh, if it, what I'm noticing, and we, even before this time, we have those that are um, endeavoring in more healthier lifestyle eating, whether it be vegan. Right. I, we, there's, there's always a joke amongst men with this kind of stuff. So it's just like, Oh, you're not you, you're not eating. Are you not eating cheese? But but you know those that are those that have a good they have a good sense of humor about it. We're always carrying on about it. So um you know I was messing with one of the brothers that that's vegan the other day, and I was like, man, you don't got me eating this this uh you know um this fried okra, and it's got me sleeping. That must mean these vegetables ain't no good for me. You know, don't matter that it's deep fried and ain't hardly no no right. no nutrition in it at all. Right. But it's a vegetable, right? Uh oh. Right. But, but nevertheless, like there will be times where the conversation is drawing attention to yourself mm. more than actually doing what it's supposed to be done for. Yeah. And, um, you know, this thing where, um, you know, this was so interesting to me. Fasting ain't nothing new, but folk always trying to find some trend, act like this is something new, you know? Well, you ought to try uh, fasting intermittent. Intermittent fasting intermittent is fasting. good for your for your digestive system. <laughs> Man, the saints been fasting forever. Come on now, <laughs> you talking like this is something new? But my point, I'm getting at what you were sharing, Pastor Chin, is that if this thing is not being done to humble oneself, right? Uh, we're missing the point. Amen. Amen. Man, I ain't seen you online lately. Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm doing. A doing a Facebook fast or whatever, you know, well, no, uh, you know, I'm trying something different. Maybe, maybe you don't need to go into details because I guarantee you that'll, a be break. that'll have to draw you to doing what you're supposed to be fasting from Lord have mercy. But anyway, first lady, come on, talk to us a little bit as we're talking about this. Amen. Uh, I want to get you a chance to say hello for one and just share with us if you had anything you wanted to share uh, in, in, in reference to this. Oh uh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I I uh, look forward to being on here more, and I, I thank God for Pastor Chin being here and, and uh, you know, discussing really with fasting and, and just allowing us uh, to really get into, you know, how God is starting to align things. I don't think it's uh, coincidental at all that, you know, we started talking about um, us being woken up at 3 and at 4 and at 3.33 and 3.57 and things like that. God is aligning his people to be on one accord. Yes. Wow. And so that allows us to begin to pray. And, and now we're fasting too. And, and, and just like you said, we don't all need to know that, that, that you're fasting, you know, that's, that's something that is literally an intimacy between yes. you and God. You know, a lot of times we don't, we don't look at it that way, but it's intimacy. It's even, it's even being committed to him and, and understanding how to follow him 
and how he can direct us yes. so we can listen rather than to respond. So um, it, 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 it begins to, to do a new thing in us so that we can go to the next level. How can we go to the next level if we're not even willing to listen? and to follow. Wow. And so just the simple things of fasting is going to allow us to do just that. There's some things that need to get out of us oh. and to be able to pour into us. Come on. And, you know, I, I love, I love the fact that, you know, we can do this, um, as a church, as we can do this as, as one, you know, as Christians period, that's one of the most powerful things that we can do besides praying. So yes. um, it, it's, it's an awesome opportunity and I thank God that I can do it more than once and that, you know, I, there's word behind it and I'm able to, to reap the benefits of it. You know, everybody does not have that, that, that communion or that relationship with God like we do. And for us to take, oh. sometimes we take it too lightly, I think as well, Wow. you know, because there's oh, that's good. powerful things that we're able to, there, there's a reason why, you know, God shielded you from this or God shielded you from that. There's a reason why, you know, you, you have to be um, set aside. You know, and, and I think a lot of times we as Christians don't understand not only how powerful we are, but the fact that we're chosen. You know, yes. we, we don't understand that that, oh, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. Wow. You know, a lot of us don't think about how powerful that is. God chose you. Chosen. Wow. He yes. Chose you. Yes. He chose anybody, but he chose you. Yes. You know, so it's, it's, it's such a blessing. And, and I count it all joy. Um, when I began to think about the goodness of God, it allows me to do that and have that intimacy with him that, you know, that nobody else can, you know, yes, we can be in church and now we're on virtual church and everything else. But when you have that intimacy and fasting, yes. things begin to be hard and you can begin to talk to God, just like as if he was right here in the room, which he is, you know, his presence is right here in the room. You know, um, it, it's, it's powerful. It is it's powerful. Here's something that's very interesting, even as First Lady was sharing this. Uh, imagine this, and this this brings, I think brings, you know, some so much more credence to what, what we're talking about in reference to what God is saying now. Cause y'all gotta realize we ain't even really got to, we ain't even got to the topic yet almost. Even though we have, we we haven't. We have. Cause, cause I'm, you know, I, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get past it to talk a little bit more about it. And even first lady talking about it, it's like, you know. But here's something that's very interesting. Uh, imagine, you know, your, your significant other, a loved one or what have you, um, needing to talk with you. But, but you saying, you know what? Uh, you know, look, I'm hungry. It's time to go eat. And imagine, imagine y'all getting ready to go eat. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? Look, well, you know what? Before we go eat, I, I really need to talk with you about some stuff. And, and, and we say, you know what? Nah, nah, I, I, nah we got to eat. I'm hungry. We got to eat right now, you know? No, in many instances, if you value that individual, you're going to pause yeah. to hear what they have to say before going to eat. Amen. Before having your time, you know, your time of eating. The time with God and, and when it comes to fasting is literally that when there is something that would feed my flesh. Mm. First, I'm going to feed my spirit. Mm. So that's that's where in many instances we're recognizing so and it's good. not it's really not about um trying to get new wave with the fast it's about the fact okay here is what fed your flesh in biblical times turn from that yes. and focus on feeding your spirit god is trying to get our attention amen, amen. dr win god god bless you good to see you <laughs> dr win amen so so what we're what what god is trying to tell us is that Whatever is feeding your flesh, that is what I'm trying to see uh, is more important. What is more important? What is it? Is sleep more important? <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, I tell you, you know, y'all know that last 10 minutes, <laughs> that last 10 minutes can, 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 can be a miracle. But, but <laughs> I, I'm putting this stuff out there, messing with you all, because okay. there is so much that, uh, and, and, and like I said, the, 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 the plate is still is definitely is, is, is up there and I, whether it's number one or not in your life or not, but the bottom line is, is that is something that is usually very common yeah. to all. And the more you fight it, the more a perfect example is that it's got a hold on us. You know, if, right. if we're, 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 whatever it is you're going to fight over. Cause see that that's one. As a matter of fact, it was who was that? That was that was us and Doctor. Now nah, I'm making him a doctor. He working toward his doctor. Right, right. Doctor Johnny Sellers and yeah. who was it? Was it um was it Brown? 
but but I'm trying to, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago about how the, the, the smartphone in many instances uh, operates in, in the same pleasure centers that um, narcotics do. And it's yeah. not by it's not by chance. An addictive it, thing. Right, right. If if you look at what is being done to cause dopamine triggers to take mm -hmm. place, there are studies going on and full teams devoted at Android, at Apple to, to come on now. Those little tones are yeah. not there just because somebody thought it was cool. It's Absolutely. there because it's to catch your attention and to, to trigger something. So my point I'm getting at is that. Uh, uh, these these smartphones in many instances are um, taking the place of many uh, of of um, controlled substances, drugs that many may have. Because uh, because a lot of people, why I'm getting at is a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't do all that. You know, I ain't drinking and I ain't smoking and I ain't doing. No, <laughs> no. But you, if you're on that phone now, here's because so, here's the here is the um the point I'm getting at that drew me to this. Whatever you gonna fight over. Is the very thing God wants. Wow. If somebody says, "Give me your cell phone right now," oh no, 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 no wait a minute! And you gotta, you gotta take, you gotta take fifty locks off your phone, and you gotta clear out fifty. You gotta right. clear out the history and all that right. before somebody get to that thing. Right. Well, you know, let me let me see you. You know, you, <laughs> we used to wow. talk about this. I say, no, you can't let brother so and so use his cell phone to play the the music before church because we don't know what might come up. <laughs> your, your YouTube wow. history is gonna tell on you, okay? Yeah. You can try to play some some Fred Hammond if you want. YouTube is gonna go back to what you listen to the most, right. and and you try to put a little Fred Hammond in, uh, you are gonna let it play for the church. Uh, within two songs, that thing gonna be right back to Cardi B or whatever it is that you listen to, <laughs> and the dirty version too. I ain't even talking about the clean version. <laughs> Lord, uh, I'm about to run. Oh out of Lord, here. help us! What happened to that consecration? What happened? Let me. Oh, I lost this. Sister, sister, Bree, sister Cool Breeze, don't mess around and mess the church up today. <laughs> Lord, we we done, we 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 done, we done turned it up three times over. Man. Can't even act like God pleased with that. Lord have mercy. Amen. Uh, but, but what I'm getting at is whatever, whatever we gonna get an attitude about, right. Is That's the right. very thing that God wants. Amen. Prophetess Tish Vaughn, God bless you, Pastor Vaughn. Man, we're trying to get Prophetess Vaughn to start. Church one Shelby, man. She won't. She won't let the Lord. She she won't let the Lord hit. You know. You know. Yeah. You know. Or you can try and get her to start church one Valentine, and she won't listen. Now, now, prophetess, if you got pants on today too, you in trouble because the saints, the the women's board, done already called everybody out. I mess. That's that's my joke for the night, y'all. Oh, but now, <laughs> that's a joke because we don't even go like we don't even roll like that. But but it's it's funny. And we don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's always funny to me. Yeah, now y'all got your pearls on. Y'all were supposed to be hundred women in white hats tonight, but y'all messed up. Y'all messed up. But anyway, Amen. I'm calling y'all out. But no, Amen. nevertheless. But what what is so important is that whatever we gonna fight about mm. is what we need to turn. And that's why I know a lot of times uh, I gotta do. I gotta turn my plate down. Cause mm. here's one thing I'd be like, look, man. You know, work and responsibilities rough right now. Lunch is my break, man. I gotta get me some lunch. You're making up all kind of excuses. You, you know, I gotta, you know, no, no, I can't, I can't lay off lunch or no, I, I can't. I need right. me a cheeseburger today. You know, this is a cheeseburger Tuesday, okay? Uh, you know, this is a coffee Monday, whatever, you know. But my point is, is whatever we're gonna start trying to rationalize out on, is the very thing God wants because that's something that we are putting uh, in place. Of what God is really trying to open a window for. Come on, talk right. to us, little Pastor. I'm trying to. I'm trying to stop. And it, and it, it, in whatever it is for you, if it's like sugar, that's another thing that they call a a, a drug. I don't yes. know if that's true, but yes. it's it's extremely addicting, right? It is um uh becoming a threat to our health. It is a root to many different diseases, right? Wow. And so there, there's an extreme addiction to sugar, right? And everything has a sugar in it. Everything, right? Salt got sugar in it. <laughs> right, right. Oh, what, and what salt so doing sugar in it? Anyway, it just comes down to that thing becoming a burnt offering mm -hmm. to the Lord. 
you know, we, we could do a whole study on the tabernacle and it'd probably take like three years, right? Because everything, and I'm going somewhere with this, but everything in the tabernacle, every jot and tittle, every inch, every material used was a, a, a type a, a, and, and symbolism of Jesus. Jesus was always, from the beginning to the end, was always present, okay? And you have to think about that tabernacle being, it was a bloody place. It was a bloody place. Just think about it. Every single time you got to go get your stuff, right? And that offering, and you just think about all the different types of offerings there were, right? So this thing, and I'm going to simplify it, whatever that is for you, sugar, fried foods, <laughs> whatever, you know, social media, whatever it is, it is an offering. Lord, I'm, I'm this here. Here. If my people who are called by my name will fast and pray. Come on. You know, so <clears throat> that is so serious. And it's not about fasting and trying to get something. You know, that's another thing. I'm going to fast so I can get this job. Ooh, I'm going to go on a fast so I can find a husband. I'm going to fast so I can. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. You know, and so I just think that if we get a clear understanding of what this is, and I know this isn't even the topic, but if we get a clear understanding of what it is, how much the Lord can just be magnified not in your life, but through your life. Wow. And you becoming a demonstration of who he is. You know, we talk about John, about Jesus being the light. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness is not comprehended. We talked about this. Um, if we could just get to the point where we can fast, we can humble ourselves and we can work on that dialogue and that relationship with the Lord so he can He can get inside and work through us. We become that light. Amen. We become that light. And so very powerful, very, very powerful. Amen. Amen. So, so this, is, this is something that's, that is a, a constant conversation uh, Matthew five sixteen was one of the ones that um that that came to mind as you were talking. So that that's for our, for our Bible scholars, for our Bible study folk. That's another one for you. Like this is Matthew, Bible study. Yep, yeah. Matthew five sixteen, and it's interesting how much how much we. That's what's been interesting about where we've gone with Bible study. We cover more scripture in these inopportune type situations. I feel right. than we did when it was like, all right, lesson for the night. Turn your Bible to this, you know. So uh, I appreciate how this is how this has been happening. Um, in Matthew five sixteen says, you know, in the same way, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is how God gets the glory through us, yes, allowing us to be uh, used by God, allowing us to be uh, the very um, catalyst, the very conduit. That's you know, it. Um, one of the, and this is this is another one of our um you know regular scriptures that that we cover on a regular basis about um as you give it shall be given good measure pressed down shaken together running over shall men Amen. give to your bosom uh you know I'm I'm um I, I'm I'm really trying to you know uh, we have to continue and that's Luke six and thirty eight where where we're trying to make sure it's understood. This thing is not mystical in the clouds where it's like, you know, waiting for something to fall out of the sky. No. God is waiting. Anywhere God moves, he uses man. He uses his creation, even I'll Labors. say. You know, I'll use it, I'll put it that way so that it's so, so you can literally look at any, whether it was a rock, whether it was a bush, whether, whatever it is, he uses his creation. So, so there is, you know, even where, where, where many would look and reference God speaking would be through his creation in many instances, you know, where rain would be shut up or rain released. That was God speaking, you know, rain shut up. God's mad rain released. 
God is blessing, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, what, what I'm getting at is that he uses his creation uh, to, to, to speak. So uh, this, this time, what God is saying now is that this time that he has us in is not for somebody else. You know, it's not for, you know, um, you know, that's not really my thing or I don't really do that. Or, or you know, I, I'm looking for the very thing that, you, that we're looking for is the very thing God is trying to get to us. But in many instances, we may see delay because we're out of tune. You know, we're not on the same frequency. It's been somebody you've been passing on a daily basis uh, because you might not think a certain thing about that person or you might not think that and is and this is not just talking about whether they look rich or not or I'm trying I can get some money from them but but the right. bottom line is you know they will have an inroads for us that we don't even realize you know and, and yeah. it's, that doesn't have to be something negative somebody you know okay yeah that that's your um you know that's your uh you know that's your hairdresser you didn't even realize that that they might have had a connection for something else that that you, that you were needing or God was trying to get to you, you know? And, um, you know, so so these, these things that God is trying to get us to understand, and here's what's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, as God is impressing upon us to let our light shine, in the marketplace, we spend a lot of time trying to not let our light shine in many instances. Mm. You know, we're about, and it's not, not like been necessarily always being a negative thing, but I'm just like, you know, don't catch me in no store because I'm going, the brothers, we go in, we get what we want, we get out and don't get in my way while we doing it. You know, <laughs> we're not in there browsing, you know, we know what we're going to get, you know, and I'm yep. not mad with the sisters, sisters do that too, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just leave that there. But, but, uh, but, but the point I'm getting at it is that, um, you know what? There was somebody that even spoke to you while you were going through that, you know, because this was a thing we used to, I, we used to, I used to always, this was an excuse about effectiveness and evangelism that I would have in my mind sometimes. You know, I'm always about it, but I would say, well, you know, man, you know, you know, I'm not really, you know, you know, it's such a, it's so hard to get in contact with people now, you know, you know, we, we're not going door to door, knocking on doors anymore like we used to. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then here's the new one. And with COVID-19, you're definitely not going door to door, knocking on doors. Right. But God would say, look, I'm giving you opportunities on a daily basis. And in many instances, we are not in tune to realize the opportunity. It was something, this has been interesting, like, uh, you know, uh, in, in opportune ways, you're running into people that maybe you know uh, from somewhere else, or yeah. you're just happening across the same people unexpectedly, you know? And I, I would kind of chuckle, because I'm like, yeah, I must be running up in Ross, or, you know, shopping to uh, right. this store, Macy's or whatever, too much about keep running into the same people, and they don't work there, you know what I mean? But but, you know, somebody just speak, you know, you know, because now depending on where you are, that's a little less uh, common than others. But this is fun. Like, I, you know, the Maryland, the DMV people don't speak, but I would go home and people would just like start talking to me. And I'm like, you know, I'm busy trying to mind my business because supposedly we don't do that, <laughs> you know, in certain areas, you know, you, you know, you be on, on up, up on, on 125th and Lennox and somebody just start talking to people. Yeah. People talk and people are giving you opportunity to let your light shine, but but the opportunity is being missed. And and it's not even from the unbeliever or the, the, the babe uh, in the faith. We're talking about those that are seasoned in the faith. My people who are mm -hmm. called by my name. There's no question. Yes. It didn't say, were you sure or not? It right. says, I, do, I know you're called. You know yes. you're called by my name, but but the cares of life, the things that might be taking place. Is it, God bless you, Sonia Douglas. Good to see you, sis. God bless you. Um, is that one of your sisters? God bless you. Good, good, good to see you, sis. Oh, that name uh, is Sonia Duncan is one. No, she's not even, never mind. That's one of Pastor Chin's sisters, amen. Praise God, divine nine in the house, amen. Amen. But, but nevertheless, we're going to tie it in one way or another. But, That's right. But, but the thing that, that, that we've been constantly running up on is that you know, it's, it's time for an alignment. It's time for, for oil change in the spirit, an oil change. Oh, I'm going to use that. Yeah, we need an oil change, you know, uh, that, that uh, you know, as we've been busy doing what we've been doing, uh, God is saying, you know, I, I'm doing a new thing. And even though we'd like to quote that, uh, are we really ready to do it? You know, let me see you do service without your hammond card. All right. You know, it is possible. And you might get more effectiveness 
then you know that ham and I ain't gonna lie will cause seed to fall on stony ground. Yes, it will. <laughs> We gonna have one though. <laughs> we gonna have one. Yes, indeed. Yes, we will. <laughs> but the bo the bottom line, Scripture says us. You know that that the stony ground uh, is the, uh, or the word uh, is like the word shared and immediately forgotten because of you know the rejoicing. You know it caused it to be uh, immediately forgotten. That's the seed sown on stony ground. God bless you, Trusty Rodney Thompson, Sister Nikki Thompson, Gabby and Grayson. Good to see y'all. Praise God for you. I want to thank God real quick for all those that I might not be seeing, but I know y'all are there. Uh, uh, I want to thank God first and foremost for our brothers and sisters at University Place Nursing and Rehab Center, that God, uh, we're, we're looking forward to being with you in person again real soon. We thank God for the God of answered prayer. Those that, that uh, we have a testimony of that have come out of the nursing home and that are with us in service now. Mm -hmm. So we thank God for you. We're believing God for continued healing, for yes. continued security where you are. I want to thank God for Bishop Alfred and Choku. Praise God for you, Bishop. I know you're out there. Sometimes we miss you and we don't get to, we don't get to, cause I, you know, the, yeah. the feed is behind the screen and I don't see it. Amen. Praise God. Evangelist. Uh, Quintilla, Quintilla Brown, God bless you. Good to see you. Amen. We thank God for you all that join us on a regular basis. Uh, but what we were sharing uh, was just understanding that as God is doing a new thing, this time of setting aside something mm. is going to allow us to be able to take advantage of those opportunities. Somebody put that in the comments that there's something that I enjoy that I'm going to set aside. Set aside. And here's the, here's the thing, you know, you said, well, we're kind of wrapping up the fast. So, uh, you know, did I miss it? No, you have opportunities on a daily basis. You have an opportunity, even as we're doing this, to do it in, in, in a staggered fashion. However, you know what? Uh, you know, as I get home, you know, I need to sit down and have me, have me a break time, uh, have me a little break or on my way home, I like to stop a little somewhere and have me a break. Come on. All right. We know we keep it real now. Come on, talk to me now, uh, people. But but the bottom line is maybe, you know what? Uh, I'm going to use this time because God, God is telling us, you know what? Spend that time with your family. Spend yeah. that time with those loved ones that are, uh, 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 are, are loaned to us from God. Because as this time is sharing and letting us know very well, very on a constant basis, is that those that are in our lives are truly loaned to us from God. Amen. And he calls them back whenever he sees fit. Amen. We had the, 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 the blessed opportunity to minister uh, at, a, at our going home service for one of our remaining aunts in the Carter family. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, it was the thing was, is, you know, understanding that uh, there's a time and a place for all things. God is trying to get us on his time. He's trying to get us focused on his time. You know, you late for a meeting uh, because you got on somebody else's time or somebody else is, is, is claiming your time when you got something else to do. God is saying, look, Ooh, here are the things that are good. claiming your time. Mm. I know. Here's the thing. We know that uh, we got a schedule before the day starts in minutes. Your calendar's already made out for you, but let somebody claim your time and that'll mess that schedule all up. God is sharing with us. Look, come on. I need you to, to get on my time. First lady, did you have something else you wanted to share? Go, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, just, um, you know, lately God has just been um, speaking to me just about as far as the um, church, as far as Christians, you know, um, and, and, I've, and I've, I've even shared this with you, you know, how can we have um, no standards, but have requirements? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm about to run. Hashtag that right Can now. I run? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna come out of my brain. I don't know. So, <laughs> what is, what well, no, somebody, wait a minute. Somebody put that in the comments now. <laughs> Please. Hashtag standards with no requ no requirements with no standards. Okay. All right. There uh, no, we go. she she asked a question. Yes. How can we? Have yes. No standards, but experience requirements oh, yeah like, yeah we have to we have to understand wow. that's that's as that's as a church you know and, and as a body of christ I, I don't understand and i think that's why god is saying okay even though i said you have to be all things to all people that does not mean that you had to sacrifice the standards that i put for you and for the church and so you know 
you know, you want you want all this, but then you you also saying, well, God, I require this, and I require a worship center, I require you know a staff, and I require a million dollars a year, and I require you know a title, and I require this because mm. you said no. How can how can that happen if you yourself don't have the standards that God? Is, that's why He said simply this. He said, you know, I do things in order, in decency, and in order, and in order. How can you have them backwards. It doesn't work that way. Wow, wow. All right. Yeah, she got to have long hair, long, pretty hair. And I ain't even got no hair. Lord have mercy. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, I'm messing with somebody's spirit right now. He got to be a doctor. Amen. All right. uh, All right. uh, I ain't going to mess with nobody's spirit. Praise God for wherever you are. But (laughs) but there needs to be a standard. Yeah, work towards your doctor. Be like Dr. Wynn. I see you out there, Dr. Wynn. Dr. Wynn got her doctorate. She can claim her a doctor. All right. Not saying that you can't. You got to be all matched up. But the point is, is that there has to be a means to meet. Here is what's interesting. I preached this a long time ago, but the thing, uh, you know, as we have shared with those that maybe are experiencing challenges in their relationships, one of the things that we share, even as they are starting relationships, we would share, look, you've got to have purpose to your union. If you have no purpose, it's not gonna work. Because here's the thing that's interesting. And here's the the thing that I recognize is that this works for non-believers even. When you got a purpose to your union, even if you're mad at each other, y'all still going to be together. Right. You know, let me, let me see you be an astronaut and your significant other, your spouse is an astronaut. Even if y'all get mad at each other, y'all still going to be together because there's only so many places that astronauts going to be. Right. (laughs) A purpose that y'all, a common purpose is drawing you together, even when you don't, even when you might not be really, really too happy about this person right now. And and, and so, so what I'm getting at is here's where these, these requirements without standards happens. If I got all these requirements, but I ain't got no standards of my own, even if God were to bless you with something uh, that you are requiring, you're not going to be able to hold on to that thing. You're going to be going in two different ways immediately. So, so this is this is uh you know uh, first lady messing us up tonight you know you know that was we're, good. we're gonna talk about turning okay. your plate down so you can look ashy and look sad <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can have a little stuff in the corners of your mouth so you can be holy you know but see first lady done messed us up tonight and now we got to take real inventory Lord have mercy see we were trying to keep this sanctified and, and talk about you know now you keep your head covered and and, and you know drink you three quarts of water and. Uh, you know that then that was fasting. No, no, that's well, right. God, God, if we listen, God is speaking. Yes, He is. I want to. Um, Go ahead. You know, uh, <laughs> I say Ashy. I'm I'm reminded of uh, to whom much is given, much is required. You were talking about requirements and standards, and it, we can. And, and notice, I said we, we, right. In, in at some point in our lives or currently, or, you know, sometimes what happens is we, we get in this, this, I don't know what word I want to use, but we get in this moment um, where we establish, like you said, those standards and those requirements when really it's God who is establishing the standards and requirements for me. It's tailor-made. So the standards and requirements, there are some generalities when it comes to uh, the Bible, but I was fearfully and wonderfully made. So there is a specific assignment that's on my life. There's specific gifts that, that, that were given to me. And I can't get into this mode where, you know what, Lord, um, I'm really not feeling like singing for them next Sunday. I want to sing over here. Watch out. I don't want to sing that song. I, you know, that's just... It's not my song, you know, and we start getting into this. It's about me instead of, um, you know, being a service to God and being ready and being equipped, you know, that time, like you said, pastor, um, it might be in the produce section at your grocery store. I'm just saying. And he might tell you, you need to go talk to the lady about this and tell her I said this. But um, yeah, I've got to be at my meeting at five. So we're going to start doing that? Wow. That's what we're doing now? Yeah, so 
and, and, this, and, this and I'm talking to myself. Funny. I'm talking to myself. Uh -huh. you know? Because we get caught up in, I got one o'clock, I got two o'clock, or I got to be over here, I got to do that. But the Lord is trying to show you something through that, yeah. the obedience in that. And then you you were talking about leveling up. Then we want to, you know, get in our closet talking about Lord, but I did this and I did that. You you said you was gonna give this to me, Lord, and I, you know, mm hmm. And so He's gonna put you in remembrance of what. You remember that time when I, you know. Yeah, I had to find another laborer for that. Right. In fact, I had to find six more. Oh. I got to keep finding laborers for this one person because wow. none of y'all are doing what I'm asking you to do. Lord have mercy. There Lord, have mercy. Right there. Lord have mercy. So by the time, by the time it gets to, I'll just, I'll use me for an example. Let's just for demonstrative purposes. Okay. Let's say I'm the 50th person he asked. This person is on the verge of, of doing something that could, could be catastrophic. And you're the last person that they spoke to, or you're the last person that, that has the opportunity to plant that seed of life or be the light, as we were talking about. This thing is serious. This thing is serious. It's, it's nothing to play with. It's not... The, let, I don't, let, me, I don't let, me believe. Share, let me share this one because this is going to keep you going. This is going to keep you going. Okay. <laughs> Deuteronomy 28 and sec, uh, the second chapter. This this takes us from what we were talking about a minute ago in reference to standards and in reference to really, really getting in tune. Deuteronomy 28 uh, and 2 talks about how, well, I read it. And it says, and all these things, all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you, comma, mm -hmm. if you will obey the voice it of the Lord your God. If, right. there's, if a, there's a comma and then there's an if, meaning that it's not yeah. gonna happen if we don't do it. <laughs> there, there are many promises in Deuteronomy 28, and and this is something uh, um, uh, Reverend, Reverend Kevin Montague will remember this one from the, uh, from our New Vision Church days. We went through the whole book of Deuteronomy, memorizing Deuteronomy 28. That's why I never forget this. But but this was something that in reference to these these promises that become our requirements god i want all this stuff but the standard is that we must fully obey yes. we we were in the grocery store one day and like i said you know we we live in an area um you know where it really wasn't a whole lot of us you know it's, it's, it's mixing up a little bit more now but mm -hmm. it really wasn't a whole lot of us when you know when we first got into this area and um you know, uh, we we I think I think we were we were in the process of planting, um, and when we were building up willing workers outreach, if I remember correct, right. and um, you know, we were in there, and I was in. I was like, you need to you need to ask this lady if you can buy her groceries for her, right. mm. and um, you know, um, you know, it would be somebody that you 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 know, and you, you wouldn't like, it wasn't Nate, wasn't a neighbor. You know, was it somebody that you would maybe necessarily just strike right. a conversation up with her? And, you know, she would, she was, she didn't expect, and to tell you the truth, I, I don't even think I was dressed like, I wasn't dressed like a pastor. You know what I mean? I, right. I, I had some, some Timberlands on or something like that or New Balance or whatever, and just looking regular. And then when I asked her that, turned out her and her husband were homeless. And he was in the car watching the child right. while she was trying to go in and get a few things. Yeah. So my point is, and this this leads right into you know continuing on what you're talking about, like that. And, and mind you, here was the other thing. This is not what you would expect in this area. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here, See? once again, here here we are again. You know, making these assumptions about right. what we think and what we see. Um, you know, in many instances when we would be targeting. Uh, because mission work, we know how to target just like a salesperson targets, you know, right. you, you know, you don't necessarily go hit somebody up for a new car if they just bought a new car, you know, you target those that don't, you know, that kind of thing. So, so when, when it comes to missions, we focus on inner city areas, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it might be a Whole Foods, but if it's a Whole Foods in an inner city area, you could potentially find people quicker that might be in need as opposed to an area that's a little more removed or suburban or whatever yeah. so what i'm getting at is that um i know how to find folk in need okay you mm -hmm. know because uh, this is what we do you know but 
but this was a situation where this is not, uh, this would have not fallen in our strategic plan for mission work kind of thing, you know? <laughs> right. This was right, you know, where it needed, where God needed it to be uh, if we would be in tune. So, because because it's really, my point is that you're sharing was that, you know, it's, it's really time to start playing, you know? Um, you know, I can, I can, there, there was a, a, a time that was, was where, where a lot of young preachers would make effort. To, well, first of all, I can remember when my pastor used to wear a collar all the time. I mean, he lived in a collar. Like summertime, he had a short sleeve, you know, and, you know, but Baptist church back in them days, they did a tab collar. You know, everybody grand now, they do the full banded collars or whatever. But he did the little, the little tab collar mm -hmm. and he wore, he wore a collar all the time. It would be a Tuesday afternoon. He would have his collar on at, you know, at church or whatever. So my point is, is like, there was, there, there was a new thing afoot where young ministers were trying to do that more, but it was to draw attention. It wasn't really to, to do no work. You know what I mean? Uh, it was to draw attention because that was a new way to kind of draw attention, you know, and not even realizing they were wearing this stuff wrong, you know, we wearing, you wearing novelty socks with your class B, you know, a, a pinstripe suit with your collar. That, right, right. that ain't even what you're supposed to be doing, man. That, that's no. turned into a fashion statement. So, right. You know, it's time for us to stop playing because the opportunities are there. Go, go ahead, y'all. Okay, I'm, I'm going. Yeah, the opportunity is definitely there. Um, and I think we sometimes get it backwards. When God blesses us to be in, I guess you can call it the secular world or in, in corporate world or whatever, he's trying to plant us there so that we can bring people to the church and, and see what we're missing what we're supposed to be doing because now we got the money, now we can afford this, now we can do that and the other. And so, you know, when, anytime that I do a business, anytime that I, that God, that I listen to God and God says, look, I need you to do this. I'm like, okay, God, what, what is it now? You know? Um, but also, you know, okay, God, I know it's going to be a blessing. I know that favor comes and I, I, I understand all that. But I remember this one time I had my stores, I had two, two consignment shops and I couldn't understand why I had to move this shop next to the Carolina Panther stadium. Okay. Mm. Right next to the Carolina Panther yep. Stadium with my um, with my store, and I had moved from where it was originally had been for almost 30, 40 years. Okay, Once and I that, took over, that was the Georgetown of Charlotte. Right. The deal with there was literally the Georgetown of Charlotte. Okay. When it was near the Panther Stadium. Wow. Stadiums, all, all everything around them stadiums usually is kind of, right. you know, it's warehouses. But anyway, right. go ahead. So I had to move to this bigger space. It was way bigger. You know, it was it was cheaper. Um, but I could not understand why I needed to be next to the Carolina Panther Stadium. But needless to say, um, I'll never forget this day. And we were in we were in revival at church and a young woman walked in my store and she said, you know, I just want to try on clothes, you know, this, that and the other. You know, I heard about your store, you know, you have all designer labels, whatever, whatever. And I was like, sure, no problem, you know come on, come on, you know, so we, we, she was there for almost three, four hours, just me and her, three, four hours, she was trying on all kinds of designer labels, and, and of course, she bought a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but what I found when she was trying on that clothes, and she told me, I'll never forget it, she said, I was going to come in, the reason why I was coming in is I was trying to find clothes so that when I kill myself, no numbers. I would have something, they would have something for me to wear. Now, most Christians, when they first hear that, if you, if you a babe in Christ, one, you probably don't know how to take that, first of all, and then understanding that spirit of suicide on that young lady at that time. So you have to be prayed up. And I always prayed before I went into my, into my, um, and in, into all of my stores, when I went into business, I always prayed and I made sure that that was, that was paramount, even with my employees that I hired, because I did not know who would come in the shop. That's right. And so I prayed with her and she said, I don't know why. And I remember saying that she said, I don't know why, but when I go home, I no longer want to kill myself. Praise God. See? I remember just praying with her and saying, do you have a church home coming? Come to Revival with me tonight because I was leaving my store to go to Revival. So I was to pick up the kids, you know, that's how mm -hmm. it was. And I said, come with me to service. And at that time, I remember I had to read the scripture that night. And when I tell you I read that scripture, 
And when I told him that young lady was here tonight, oh, even when I think about it now, the chills that that place had when, when I read that scripture and I, and I said, she's here, you know, cause I didn't care about the money. I didn't care about the fact that she had bought all these clothes. It was the fact that I just saved a soul that was literally trying to take God, the devil tried. That's good. But God, God stepped in for her. Yes, indeed. And see, my thing is, is how many of us as Christians, when people say, oh, I don't know why this person is hungry. God's trying to use you. You see a person hungry, feed them. Yes, indeed. yes. yes. You know, if you see that a, that a struggling mom is, is, is having issues, help them. You know, we, we got to get out of this point of being so um, desensitized to what what humanity is going through mm -hmm. that we say oh no it's a no we as Christians we need to be on we need to be on post we need to be on our duty so thank you so much for bringing that up because that's necessary that's necessary yeah, and it's it's um and in in and in in my time with the Lord being reminded of that to repent for the many times that that I know of and that I don't know of right. that I missed right that, that, that I missed. And, um, that's, that in itself is humbling, you know? Um, but it, it is, it is so important. It's so funny, um, that you said, there's something that you said that is familiar to me. And you said that the woman said, I don't know why. Right. So oftentimes as not just Christians, but Christ followers, because there's a difference, right? When we are in the mode of being a willing vessel like that, we hear similar things like, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Mm -hmm. or, I have no idea why I'm here, or I don't know why I don't feel like this anymore. I don't, you hear that often. You know why. <laughs> um and and it's that moment where you realize you it, it, not just not me lord but praise god and we say jesus is lord all of the time at church one and that is indicative of that moment where we are removed and and we're allowing him to work through us and it really um it is humbling experience. Yes. It, it it really is because and it's not something you like you're giving a testimony. This is this is in this is perfect in this setting. But but oftentimes I hear people and they start bragging about those things. Mm. It wasn't you. You're right. Right. God. That, <laughs> you need to just stop. Okay. It was you being a willing vessel and God working through you to save that person, that spirit, that soul, and he trusted you with her. That's, that's the powerful thing right there. That's it right there. He trusted you with her. Right. And that, you know, I, I believe, and this is just the, 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 the higher, for lack of a better term, from each glory to glory that we we go with God, and you said level up, but I understood what you meant. We should come down. The higher he takes us, the lower we should get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and, and you were talking earlier about titles. You know, like, <laughs> and to me in the kingdom, the title, like you almost want to go, oh, I want to run. I want to run because you know what it requires, you know? That mantle, there's there's such a huge responsibility. And um, in oftentimes where we earn our living is the training ground that he uses. Right. Absolutely. He uses us. In that moment, so. I, I'm the king of making titles, so <laughs> you know we ain't ever gonna be without enough titles. <laughs> you know what I mean? Being defined by that title, the title is everything. It is defined who I am. You know, so. Romans Romans twelve, Romans twelve, 
Is it 21? Where it talks about we make an endeavor to not to be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here is our command. Here is our responsibility. Here is something, uh, even he, it's Hebrews, Hebrews 13, Hebrews 13 and 2, talk, that's the one where it talks about to show kindness to strangers because you might not know you're entertaining angels unaware. Unaware. For some reason, I always felt like that was an Old Testament scripture, but that's a New Testament scripture. Uh, not the means it gives it any less power, but it's serious. sometimes it's when you recognize where conversations in scripture are, it gives you different insight. Yeah. It is a New Testament mandate. Yep. That and we, you know, we've had those moments. We've had, we've all had those, you know, those moments where you go, you kind of look back and be like, wait a minute. There was something different about that person. There was, it was, it was not, it was the look in the eye. It was what they said. And you're like, Ooh, you know, yeah, and yeah. even the thing, the thing that I like is, and this would be the joke. If I was an angel, or if I was God, this is the joke I would play. It would be, it would be individuals that are a little off, that are a little off. You know what I mean? That's the way I would do it. That's how I would really mess with folks. They would be a little off, but they wouldn't be saying anything crazy, but they would just be a little off. And I'm like, no. okay, you are, okay, are we done having a conversation? Are you, like, I'm not even it, you know? So nevertheless, oh. <laughs> I, I'm serious. Like, and because see, those are the ones that I'm really concerned or careful about. Reverend Johnny Sellers, good to see you, Rev. We, we must have talked you up, bro. Good to see you, man. That's another uh, one of my purple and gold brothers. Yes, indeed. Sixth District all day long. I don't care where you, you know, that Sixth <laughs> District. Yes, indeed. North and South Carolina. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, in Mighty Six. But uh, Mary Williams, hold on. She said, Pastor Charles's church, everybody has a title. That's right. You're right. If you come to church one more than, more than a couple of times, we're going to put you to work. <laughs> we'll give you a title so you feel all right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We got we we the only church that's got junior church mothers under five. Amen. But they all sanctified. That's the thing. I, I love it. I love sanctified. it. And, and I'm not even really playing about that. They will call the old ones out. Right. Like you know, yeah, you you shouldn't be wearing that. Right. We you gonna church. have you gonna have those kids going to school talking about. I'm like, wait a minute. I know I'm a junior church mother. Right. Well, we can you tell you know. Uh, story yes we can tell you a story about our youngest one when we were going to we were going to school this is before the pandemic and uh she said she said mommy i hope that i do the prayer this morning mm. because I need the glory to come in god almighty <laughs> come on yes well, i just hope that the teacher oh uh, yes out of <laughs> the mouths of babes good god almighty I'm about to get out of the mouths of babes Ooh. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I need. I'm excited right there. So, but, but, but that was, uh, you know that there is. So, so thank, thank you, Missionary Marion Williams. Um, I also give titles to folk that's running from their call too. Okay. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm messing with some folk right now. Uh, praise God, Missionary. Amen. Amen. But that uh, she don't need a title to, to do. She doing it already. Praise right. God. Amen. But no. But that that whole. You know, thing thing that we, we we've been talking about, um, and, and even as we're kind of beginning to to reel it in, y'all know what these. I, I tell people all the time. You know, this this could go thirty minutes. It could go an hour and thirty minutes because if God is speaking, we're we're not in a hurry. Why? Because math is universal, y'all. Anything that there's more of is what's going to win. Come on. If you have more water in your house than you do air, you in trouble. You in trouble. <laughs> if you got, you know, if you got more fire uh, uh, under your, in your vehicle than you do um, uh, air, you, you in trouble. But it's only when we start talking about things of the faith do we like to get mystical about stuff? Mm. Well, you know, I'm going to spend 30 seconds with God and then the rest of the day doing whatever. And I can't understand why I ain't getting the prayer through. The math, you know, see, see our 5% brothers like to try, they, they think that we don't understand math, you know? Right. And, you know, they like to try to use math in many instances that's, that, that's not even, uh, uh, it's, it's not even math uh, to, try, to try to have a conversation uh, about 
reality. But the bottom line is, is why we're not rushing these, because in many instances, if we're going to sit and watch a four hour football game, okay. mm. we're going to sit. These reality shows, they let these things go an hour and a half now. Yes. I used to be able to sit through some of this mess that folk want to watch in this house sometimes, knowing that it would be <laughs> over it. Now these things go like, like, my God, when is this going off? <laughs> oh, my goodness. My point is, is why we're not rushing this is because God, God truly has a desire to use us as a conduit, uh, to cause us to stay in tune, to cause us to realize that we are entertaining his creation in whatever way it comes about, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, angels, mm -hmm. whether it be those that he's truly entrusted mm -hmm. uh, to be responsible for, or those that we just come in contact with, uh, we're, we're making it and we're endeavoring, as the scripture says, talks about in Ephesians fourth chapter, talks about how we're endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit within the bonds of peace. Mm -hmm. The reason why we unrest ever comes about is because of a lack of keeping the unity of the spirit. Because when we do that, it causes the bond, the bonds of peace is the very thing that holds it together. That's it. And, and we we can't, what God is saying now, uh, and you know, this, this has nothing to do with, uh, this, this isn't a, a skin problem, it's a sin problem. Hey. And, and uh, you know, some people- It's an old, Ages old, centuries old, right. sin problem. Yes. You know, I mean, and and the thing is, is whether you mistreating folk uh, by what you say, if you mistreating folk by uh, the, the 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 various laws that you help pass. Okay. Uh, you know, you want to go take you a mission trip to Haiti, but you won't even. Uh, but you're doing stuff that's causing young children right in your community to not be able to go to your school. Uh, you you got to understand that, that this is this is this is not where God is. Yeah. And whenever we get there, it's when we have to realize this is not where God is. Ichabod is written over your church. Woo! Ichabod is written over your house, over whatever it is you're calling blessed. God is not in that. You know what? What even as you you know you know do things out of um, cultural fancy. You know, churches got better sound systems than the clubs do now. Okay. And and I mean, and they bumping, they bumping better music than the clubs do now. And it don't be, it don't be God's praises in many instances, you know. Uh I I and this is a whole nother conversation because 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 Pastor Chin being a musician and a worship leader for many years, um, I used to always have a problem with this, and I still have a problem with it where I, I used to, I, I mean, I still give it a hard time, but I recognize, praise God for at least being something semi-positive on as opposed to some of the junk on the radio all the time. But much of what is on um, non-secular stations is still secular music. You know, it's it, inspirational music is not the gospel. That's why it can cross over. Right, and it allows crossover. A lot of us, I mean, and I don't, I appreciate yeah. it. Good gospel, mu good music, sharing yeah. the gospel, having, because that used to be a problem when I was younger. I had a problem with gospel music because they had real weak production. Either mm -hmm. it was, if it was anything that attempted to be modern, it was real weak, you know? You could tell it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, but I mean, now, I mean, you talk the cross movement, you know, you talk, you know, uh, uh, um, shout out to Pastor, uh, shout out to uh, uh, Pastor Quentin Mann from the Just His League. Just His, yeah, the Justice League, amen. Uh, these brothers can rap, can, they, they can blow out anybody, I mean, they batter than, than, than folk uh, in the secular realm now. So I appreciate how things have grown up, but yeah. my point is that um, the, 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 this inspirational stuff is not the gospel, you know? Uh, because if it doesn't share the gospel, it's not the gospel. If it doesn't, if it can't even mention the name of Christ, it's not the gospel. It's, it's not good news music. You know, it might be inspirational, but it's not the gospel. And 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 where 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 we're having a, an issue at in many instances is we're doing things out of cultural fancy, mm. um, mm. and not really. So so the thing is, is because we like to kind of point the finger at you know, hey, well, man, you know. You know, y'all mistreating folk. We're doing it. We're, getting, we're setting up country clubs. We're using the church as a country club. Mm. You know, we use we using we using you know the you know the the church as a nightclub. 
And I'm not talking about doing stuff that is in tune to draw people to actually share the good news with them. I'm talking about the overwhelming inundation of worldliness that yes. causes the gospel to be null and void in a place. Not so with the standards. So, so once again, here's the standards. Here's the standards. We, you know, we if we're not adhering to a standard, God is saying, you know, my presence, that's not my presence. Here is yep. as, as you as, as people get an opportunity, you don't even have to travel anymore. If you take the time to watch how varying cultures around the world interact, you can recognize things that we do and call the spirit is really not the spirit. Mm. It's the connection of like minds. Right. Yes. I want you, anybody that's listening tonight, whenever you hear this, to go look up uh, the People's Republic of China and how they used to respond to their leader. I'm telling you, it looked like anybody's Pentecostal church right now. I, you, it'll mess you up. You think you got a you 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 got a a a a a a, 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 a lead on you know how to move, the spirit moves. The point I'm getting at is that if we don't allow God to do things in an authentic way, we're putting God in the box. Yeah. And what He's saying is, I want an opportunity to show you in so many ways who I am. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be the way it always used to be. You know, I like. I like putting that that RPM uh, or, or the BPM on one to, on 165. I'm oh, sorry, did somebody somebody uh the bass. What was that? I think you were talking about the music. Keep going. Okay, all right. You know, not only the Hammond but the bass. Praise God. But my I point think he was I think he was talking about how to before when you were talking about the the music. There were too uh, many highs. You need a little bit more bass in the music. <laughs> I think that's anyway, my point I'm getting at is nobody like me loves to, loves to put that beats per minute on 165 or more and crank it up. Yeah, praise God for that. But if if, if we limit God to a praise break, you know, of the way we're used to doing it, wow. God, God is saying, you know, I have so much more. I want to give everyone an opportunity to close to wrap up, and we're gonna ask Pastor Chin to close us in prayer. But I want to give everyone an opportunity for closing words. It's not a rush. But at the same time, what I'm saying is I'm going to stop talking. Uh, so, so for First Lady, did you have anything else you wanted to share as we were wrapping up? No, I think uh, we really, you know, we talked on different subjects on what is God saying from fasting to, um, to music to, you know, um, having standards to understanding that, you know, going forward, there's still stuff that we need to do. God is wanting more from all of us. And in doing so, we have to be humble. We have to understand where we're going. And the word is going to help us do that. Um, and we have to understand he chose us. We're chosen too. Amen. And so we, we've got to use that same zeal that we do when we want to go for all those things that we put on our list and everything that we want to do in our, in our own lives. But yeah. we also have to allow God to use us. And when he's using us, not only understand that he's using us so that he can build the church and yes. build the kingdom, but we can't be afraid of it either. So God is just allowing us to, to, to get all on one accord. It, it's not, it's, don't think it's strange on why we keep waking up at three and four o'clock in the morning and that we're needing to pray. He's trying to get us all on the same page. Amen. So I thank God for that. And, and, and I thank God for this time that we've had together. And I, I truly enjoy, um, you know, and I hope all others who have, who have chimed in and have joined with us have truly been blessed. Yes. Amen. And and what we the, the overarching oh, what we talked about that everyone needs to take from this. Oh, okay. All right. We got <laughs> y'all know I ain't gonna let that go. No, <laughs> you know, everybody ain't gonna even get that joke. But we talked about pants in the Lord's house, amen. Lord, and the standard <laughs> that God has. Oh my goodness, I'm about to praise him right now. <laughs> You know you need to stay. Hey man, who who uh who's been run away from the church with somebody talking that foolishness? Lord have mercy. Hey Amen. But 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 we need to we need to be uh you know <laughs> aware, aware and connected. I, I like to joke about like that, but but needing to be aware and, and hear hearing from God. Yes. And Pastor Chin, come on, share with us and, and, and then at, when whenever the Lord leads you, uh close us in prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm just believing uh now um in this season, in this particular season, that 
the Lord is exposing things. He's allowing things to be opened and exposed and he's revealing things uh, in every aspect, not just in the body of Christ, but in every aspect of our lives so that we can deal with those things, so that we can spend more time with family, so that we can start to investigate, Lord, what is it you're trying to show me in this situation? Things, uh, and I'll speak briefly about this, when we're dealing with uh, this situation, right, um, and, and that is a, um, attacking our health, right? Um, you know, it has offered opportunities for us to spend time with our family, to nurture some relationships, to realize, oh, I didn't know that's what was going on in the house, you know? And so I, I think that the Lord is, is just really opening up and, and, and taking the glasses, clean, cleaning the lens and allowing us to have a more clear view uh, of, of what it is he sees, not just in us, but around us, right? And so um, that's what I believe he's doing now in this moment. Amen. Before you pray, 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 Pastor, I want to offer someone an opportunity. Uh, if this is uh, your first time with us, if this is your first time hearing even a conversation as such, and you're saying, you know what, uh, I believe there's a greater connection I need to have with God. You know, I, I've been on the outskirts with this thing. You know, if someone were to ask me, do you know Christ as your savior? I would have to have a conversation in my mind uh, before I might even say yes, but still I'm not really fully sure. We want to offer Christ to you today, not because I'm somebody with a, um, a, a monopoly on who Christ is, but an, op but, but an opportunity that if I have, uh, if we have your attention right now to even ask you to come and pray with us this prayer. Pray this simple prayer. It says, Father, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you died for my sins. Save me right now. Yes. And I believe right now, according to your word, you told me that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe right now I'm saved. If you prayed that prayer, if I did it too fast and you had to rewind it a time or two, that's all right. Uh, if you prayed that prayer, seriously, not only with a mouth confession, but a heart belief, you are amongst the household of faith now. We need you to get in contact with Church One Charlotte, with Church One Alpha Redham, uh, with, with uh, those that can allow the discipleship process and assist in the discipleship process beginning. Uh, we thank God for this opportunity we had to share tonight. And we want you to know that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is that Lord. Christ the King is Lord. What does that mean? You know, that's not just a catchphrase. That means God is in control. Whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're running into issues, whatever you're banging your head up against the wall with right now, that's got you vacillating from, from, from extreme highs to monumental lows on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. What that means is when God is in control, our dependency is on him, not others. Not people that we put our trust in that have let us down. Not, not some job or, or some expectation that we had that has not panned out. Our trust is in him who has made the heavens and the earth. And we just thank God for the opportunity to share with you all tonight. I'm going to ask Pastor Chin to close us in prayer. And then I'm going to ask her to just give her, her, her service times. I'm asking her to give uh, you know all of her... Um, you know, all of her information as we close out. We got one of our church mothers with us tonight with her pearls on. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. But go right, ahead. go right ahead, Pastor. Father God, we just thank you for this moment, this time that we could tabernacle with you, that we could commune with you in great fellowship. I thank you for uh, Pastor Carter and Lady LaShonda today in this moment i thank you for for them being willing vessels to open up this virtual sanctuary for all of us to come together we thank you that we didn't have to forsake the assembly but that we could come together and we know when two or more are gathered lord we thank you that you are in the midst we thank you lord for that 
We're thanking you for the word today. I pray that everyone that is on this call, that is on this, this virtual sanctuary, I'm thanking you that you are opening our hearts, that we are becoming more willing vessels to what you're saying to us, that we're clear-minded, Father, that we are submitting to your will, Lord, not our will, but your will be done. And so we lift you up in this moment. We honor you. We love you, Lord. We love you right in this moment and forever, Lord. And so we give you the honor and the glory and let us all shout, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 As, as we're wrapping up, I want to tell that Sister Lexi says she need to, she need to make me a shirt that says, here comes the, here comes the church jokes. Well, I got, I got one more for you tonight, Sister Lexi. Praise God for gifted hands, gifted hands, right? That's the name. Gifted. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gifted, gifted hands. She does some awesome oh, work. No, no. It's, um, it's custom. It's a uh, color me custom. Color me custom. Where I get gifted hands from know. anyway. <laughs> she got gifted hands. Amen. Yes. But, but her, her graphic arts and, and, uh, and, and clothing apparel and, 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 uh, businesses she has praised God for sister Lex Lexi Evans. Amen. Um, here's the, here's the last church joke for the night. I want y'all to take this with you tonight that the pastor Chin said, if you got tabernacle in the name of your church, your church is dirty. I want you to know. <laughs> I didn't say that. She said that, didn't she say it? She said it. Did I say that? Lord, she said, Lord, your church. But no, but no, that was that was that was good. That was a good, a good uh, uh symbolism of, of what the tabernacle really is. It was a place where work was going on. Lord have mercy. But mm -hmm. come on, share with us your service times, Pastor. Share with us more information about all that you got going on, your cash app, all that wonderful stuff. Absolutely. So we hold our services, obviously, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live. You can also visit us at our Facebook page. Um, go ahead and like and follow that. You can be updated with services and events and, and our prayer time, which is also uh, 7 p.m. on Monday nights. We also have a Bible study on Wednesday nights. Um, and so I welcome you to, to join us in fellowship. Um, you can reach out to us uh, on Facebook by, uh, you know, messaging us on Facebook, or you can email us at c1alphga at gmail.com. Okay. Man, so. well, we thank God for you, Pastor. Amen. And just, you know, thank God for the shut-in. I know you got, you got the shut-in coming in, right? You're coming up. All right. At the all-night shut-in. Praise him. <laughs> Come on. Oh, Amen. I'm right there. All night shutting. Good God Almighty. Come on. I, 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 ain't, I ain't even playing, to be honest with you. <laughs> all right. Somebody talking about doing all night shutting. We'd be like, uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> but anyhow, praise God for you all. We're wrapping up tonight, but we want to thank God once again for Pastor Tiffany Ann Chin. Thank you. Uh, well, let's see his new, his new, his new title, Vice Vice Under Shepherd Deacon Delroy Chin. Praise God. Man. Vice that's Under a, Shepherd. That's a, good, that's a good title there, man. You know? Yeah. So I, I'm gonna have to remember that one. Yeah. Make some titles of the night. Vice Under Shepherd. Uh um uh Deacon Delroy Chin. Amen. Praise God Amen. for him and your family. Thank God for you all. And like I said, we look to see you all real soon. But God bless you. We'll see you real soon. Thank have you. a good one. Good night. Good night. Good night.